I'm going to apologize to you in advance because I, I tear names up. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like Muhammad Ali, how, how he be ducking and moving and slipping and jabbing. That, that's me with names. That's, that's, that's me with names. I, I be slipping and jabbing. I be ducking and dodging. And I, I hit that A that's supposed to sound like an at. And I, yeah, yeah, that, that's me. So I'm going to apologize in advance. So. So Leah in the building. North Carolina, stand up. Take your shirt off. And let's <laughs> toss it like a helicopter. What's going on? I'm, I'm happy to be here. I, I am. Hey, I'm happy. I'm I'm happy to finally to get at you. It's it's been a minute. We we reached out with each other about a year a, a year ago, right? About about a year this time. There we For go. Last year. Yeah. Yeah. I think I I stitched one of your videos. And uh, and um, all of a sudden, I I was I I went back to the initial videos because everybody in the comment section of that video was like, "Oh man, that beautiful dress! It was a yellow dress, you know." And I was like, "It's the nipples for me." Well, you have a man and woman on the timeline. I wasn't even mad. Yeah, I was like, yeah, but then all of a sudden, it just and disappeared. And then it's it it been a minute, and then I I believe he came back with another another account stating that that whole account was banned. So talk to me, what what happened? Why, Jimmy? Why are you still not renting your movies from the Netflix? Come here, sit down. It's so if somebody was reporting my videos or what the case may have been. But TikTok flagged me for nudity and sexual suggestive content. And that kind of blew my mind because nowadays, like, I'll scroll my timeline and I'll see so many other, like, sexually suggestive videos and they're up. I literally went through two different TikTok accounts. I grew my first TikTok account to about 21K. I started over, grew that one to about 10K, got banned again. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, the third time is the charm. I don't know if you've noticed, but I definitely had to like switch up my content and stuff this year because I'm just like, there's no way they're going to flag me and get in the way of me marketing my business. I just got sick of it. <laughs> so the, the, first, the, the first TikTok account, the, the one that I came across, you know, the one where you was, you know, showing off the dress. Are you, what What are you in the sense of marketing? Is, are you a, a, a dressmaker or what, 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 what's your niche on TikTok? So I am a clothing designer. So I have a clothing brand named Body by Lil. And that was one of my two dresses that I had put out a couple of years ago. Um, me, personally, when I made that video, I was just in the house, chilling, no bra on, just dancing, having a good time like I normally do. And so, anytime you see me post it, I'm either wearing my brand and um, just bringing awareness to body positivity and self-love. And so, that's really all my brand is about. And so that's why it was so frustrating every time I would come out and put out a video and they're like, nope, it's not appropriate. <laughs> and it's funny that, you know, I'm not a real big TikTok supporter. I, 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 I the only thing for me in TikTok is, is content for me. And that's how I come across you guys. So when I when I seen the video again, like I said, I, I thought it was a nice video, awesome dress. It 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 fits you well. And again, like I said, when I commented on it, I was like, yeah, it, it, it's the whole aesthetic, you know, for me. So when you come back into your TikTok later on to see that your account 
was banned. How did that affect you the first time? Um, it hit me more so like emotionally because I was really like disappointed. I was just like, Dad, because I've worked so hard. I had started my brand back in 2020. And back then, I wasn't really on TikTok heavily. And so whenever I did start, this is probably about mid-2021, and um, I got on there, you know, just playing around with my kids. You know, they would start teaching me the TikTok dances and stuff. And after having a baby, I had found TikTok to be really enjoyable because I don't know if you know this about women who are pregnant, but we kind of lose our rhythm. It, I don't know if it's everybody. I know it was just with me. <laughs> Both times I came uh, postpartum and just felt like I just could not dance. And so TikTok became like a really fun playground for me. But then I realized once um, I got more active on it, like, wow, this is a really great marketing platform. And so for me, it was just a feeling of disappointment because I was just like, dag, I, my whole, you know, um, course of trying to use the platform to grow my audience and find my target people, it was like I finally had my moment and then it got snatched away. It was just like, sheesh, all this hard work I put in, all the content I've made, and then I literally have to start from scratch. Wow. That's that's crazy. Again, like I said, I'm I'm not a huge fan of TikTok, you know, for several reasons. But for for you guys to, you know, use TikTok as a promotional tool, I can see that and understand that. All right. So you you dust the shoulders, you know, you came back and you decided to make another TikTok. Uh, of course, it was kind of what was it hard for you to generate as many followers as you did the first time easy make a list of movies you want to see and get your first dvds in the mail in about one business day um i will say yes but in the same breath the second time around really made me aware of how supportive a lot of my previous followers were it was like i had people finding me like i couldn't find your page i was looking for your content and I was wondering where you were, and they literally just found me because I kept the same tag, but I just added like an underscore. So it was easy for them to just, you know, search up body X Lil and then boom, you find my next page. And so I was like, wow, not people all here looking for me. Like, thank you. And so whenever, you know, I just went back to posting more content, um, I had another viral moment. This time I had on like this lingerie one piece that is available in my store and it wasn't uh revealing as far as like none of my nipples or aerial or none of that was showing it was cleavage um and I had did uh it was a transition with the sound that you and my number had to hit them with the mm -mm. I'll never forget that one went up 24 hours later, I think I got up to probably about 30, 40,000 views on that video. TikTok shut me down. <laughs> I was like, y'all cannot be serious. Y'all just won't let me be great. I haven't posted, in a, posted a TikTok in lingerie or anything just remotely similar to... <laughs> Anything that can make them flag, oh, this is sexual. You can't post this. Now, the second time around, TikTok did that to you. Do you feel that TikTok itself done that to you, or you think you have some, you know, some people that didn't find your content, you know, didn't find your content appropriate? Honestly, it could go both ways. I really don't know. Um, I feel like everybody has haters at the end of the day. So I wouldn't put it past, you know, somebody who doesn't want to see me win or, like you said, didn't think what I was posting was appropriate. They could have flagged it. Um, because, again, I'll post, I'll see on TikTok now other women in lingerie or posting, like, spicy content, and it's still up. So it really made me feel like, you know, somebody is 
praying for my downfall. They don't want to see me and my family eat. All right. So now you now, of course, I'm I'm thinking you feel in some kind of way with TikTok as a whole. Like, man, what the, you know, it, it took me a long time to build the first following. Then I, I get this viral video to help me build the following again. And now it's just been snatched from you. Now, now how you feeling? Like, what, what what's your thoughts on TikTok then? What I mean, did you want it to come back on TikTok or did you did you reach out to TikTok? Because I know some of the creators on TikTok says that the communication will take virtually not there. Right. So I did appeal the decision to try and get my account back. They denied them. Um, and honestly, to know me, you'll understand that I am very persistent. I'm determined. Um, a lot of people who are new to the brand don't realize that BODY is an acronym. Um, it stands for Beautiful, Assertive, Wise, Determined, and Youthful. Those are all things that I use to describe myself. And so even though I had, like, a bad feeling about how, you know, my account got taken down, in my mind, I still was just like, you know what? I'm going to give it another try. Literally the same day my account was banned, I went on Gmail, made another email, and made another TikTok. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, I was just like, it's so much bigger than this setback. I know that if I want to keep reaching more people and having people learn about me and my brand, I have to put myself out there. So I couldn't let that setback stop me from the bigger goal. So nowadays, like I said, I just changed up how I create content, um, what I wear. And really, as a brand owner, I find it easier to just sell myself. Let people know, like, who I am, how I live my life. I post a lot of, like, lifestyle vlogs and stuff now. It, it all ties together. Because, like, this past weekend, I had did a fashion show. Hold that and thought. I hold, hold that thought. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> we'll Sorry. definitely, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so, TikTok, you decided to come back to it. But why... Why TikTok? Why not try your hand at other uh, platforms, say like IG, for example? Why Why you didn't give IG a chance? Oh, it is. Easy. Shut up. Keep as long as you want. Send one back in a prepaid envelope, and they automatically mail another from your list. So I'm actually on all platforms. I'm on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, this year, Facebook started monetizing my content and so that's been a blessing but IG specifically um I just don't get as much um views on IG opposed to TikTok I feel like with the TikTok algorithm um I'm able to reach a broader audience I feel like IG kind of caps me like with just my followers and it's rare that it'll reach people who don't already follow me and then it'll bring them over. I've always had better um, chances with TikTok as far as finding a broader audience in other states and people that don't know me. I think I agree with you. I, I'm I'm definitely going to agree with you on, uh, on IG. I, I feel that IG has a limited a limited algorithm as far as pushing the content unless you're paying for it, you know, because it's, you know, it's, it's always a thing down at the bottom that simply says, Hey, boost this video for such and such. And we'll bring, yep. you know, we'll bring more views. And I'm like, okay, I'm not doing that. If people see it, they see it. I'm cool. That's, you know, and besides, as far as IG, I don't, I don't use IG as a, you know, as a platform for, uh, for push content. I use IG as far as, uh, communication. And what I mean by that is that on YouTube, you know, where I'm, where my staple is at, there's no way to get in direct contact with me 
unless by the channel number or the Gmail that I leave in the description. Not, not something that's like directly, you know, connected to the channel itself. So when I send people over to IG, they can easily get at me much more easier than you could get at me if I was on YouTube or TikTok. Now, same thing with TikTok. You have to follow each other in order to conversate with each other. And that's kind of chore in itself because when I try to, you know, get somebody attention, you know, I, I usually put their at, but sometimes their privacy, you, you can't even use their at. So, you know, you try to get their attention by, hey, check your inbox or, hey, you know, follow back and yada, yada, yada. And it is just, you know, it's just a whole a whole thing over there. Now with IG, it's simple. You know, you just text in the uh, text in the thing. Sign the top, give me the bot, or sign the top, keep the bottom. Now with IG, is is easy. You know, just hit me up in the DM, and boom, I'll be able to see it, and we'll be able to conversate back and forth with that. All right. So fast forward to 2023. You're back. You were late fees? Forget about it. No late fees. Shut up. There's a movie waiting. Back, you switched your whole content up. Of course, you're not doing anything sexual in nature. You got a lot of lifestyle vlogs on there and and other things like that. But there's a video that's kind of going viral right now. It looks as though you was at a fashion show and it just turn chaotic what happened okay so as far as the fashion show is concerned um the event started out great we had 10 designers in the building we had four ready-to-wear brands and four custom designers who start from scratch so all their things and we got to the very last act and this woman had 54 looks that she had planned on hitting the stage. Only four of those looks hit the stage because during the fourth act, there was a woman recording. She was standing in front of a little girl. It was a family-friendly event. People, grandmas, aunties, everybody was there. And the little girl's mom said something to the woman who was standing in front of her, like, hey, my daughter can't see. Can you move? And you can see in the videos that I posted, I believe the first act was the woman's, like, daughter or family member because she was, like, jumping up and down. She was really happy, excited. She had her flash on. She was getting content and videos. And the woman was just like, well, can you have your daughter stand up because I'm recording? Mama didn't like that. Mama felt like her daughter shouldn't have to stand up because she paid for the ticket. She got her seat, and that's just what it was. So when the girl didn't move, Mama started pushing. The lady turned around and gave her a warning. And y'all can go back to my TikTok. I slowed it down. <laughs> the warning didn't work. The lady pushed her even further. And next thing I know, when everybody caught, right about, caught wind over what was going on, punches were thrown. And the put it on the flow fashion show ended in somebody being put on the flow. And that's just what it was. <laughs> um, there was police there on site. Everybody was made aware that security would be enforced. So as soon as the fight broke out, they shut down the event. Um, my models and I, we had to rush back to the dressing room. They wouldn't even let us come back um, towards the area where the fight had went on, they made us go out the exit and out the building. Everybody had to go home, and that was that. It was a really great, positive event that was put together with great intentions. And and I, I get it. Whenever alcohol is involved, people do tend to act out of character. But I always feel like it's a time and a place for everything. And I also feel like, you know, a lot of people were saying, like, well, she should have just moved. They pay for those spots. But I also feel like in the same breath, um, whenever you choose to disrespect somebody, you can't choose or you can't really predict 
how they're going to respond to that disrespect. Because just like a kid, you send your kid to school and somebody pushed them, you tell them, okay, push them back. Why would you expect a, an adult to act any differently? I don't think that was a good example she set for her daughter. I, 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 don't, I, I don't think that either. Of course, you had a backlash of of comments um, in that particular video. Uh, a few of the comments was kind of discouraging. I mean, and a few of them was kind of on point, you know, but I, I just wanted to get your feelings like, you know, it, it was a, it was a whole it was all it was it was a, it was an all minority event. And of course, when a whole bunch of minorities get together, one thing can leads to another. And at the end, at the end of it is it was the big brawl. How did you how, how did you feel about it? I mean, you put it together, your money, you know, you put money into it. The event you had had security there, even though it still broke out. How, how do you feel about it? And do you think the place where you rented out the event, you do you think they'll they'll be receptive to you in the future? So actually, um, I wasn't the one that put up the money to plan the event. Um, the event was put together by this man named Artney Ellerby. Um, he is, I don't even want to call him a promoter. He is an entrepreneur in the area who often does these type of things. Um, a few years ago, he had done a Facebook award show at the same venue, and he did a fashion show last year at another venue, and this was the first time doing it there, um, just because it was, um, it had more space and um, it was closer in town to, you know, most of the people who were attending. And after speaking with him about how everything went down, you know, he was, you know, super embarrassed. He felt like, you know, it was uncalled for. And at the end of the day, um, he did have to pay for like, you know, um, insurance or any type of liabilities that could have been, you know, went on during the event. So it's like a lot of money was put into it. Um, would he be able to host another event there again? Um, that is still up in the air. Um, but I know me personally, in that particular town, if I'm asked to come do an event, body won't be there. I just, uh, I took notes and I take every experience and I learn from it. And I just understand that, um, yeah, every business decision is not a good business decision. It's like, yeah, I want to put myself out there and I want to be um, recognized by new audiences. But that particular town, we were in Hamlet, North Carolina. It's in Richmond County. I was born in Richmond County, so I already knew what type of tone comes with the area, but I just had so much faith that because of where it was, the Cole Auditorium is connected to a college. So this is literally like territory that you know not to cut up on. And the fact that they still cut up is like, okay, I learned my lesson, won't happen again. Wow. I am so sorry that that happened to you. And the models was showcasing your brand, right? Your your outfits? Yes. yes. And we actually went first. So everyone was able to see my entire um, walkthrough. There was a few mishaps with like the DJ, the microphone wasn't working. I ended up having to do my intro um, with no microphone, kind of just yelling at the crowd. I really didn't like that too much. Um, but all in all, my models did great. Everybody did great. I just hate that the last act wasn't able to be seen because this is one of the designers who handmade all of her stuff. I remember her posting on Facebook about being up several days. She hadn't slept for weeks just to make sure that all of her 
designs were perfect and she really prepared so she's been preparing for this since October and for it to finally come to that day and her to only have four out of her 50 plus looks seen I knew that just crushed her heart like she was crying like it was it was it was really bad and I, my heart really you know felt for her because I know how much as a designer we value our time and this the vision just did not happen the way we thought it would so uh the two people that was involved uh what was what was their repercussions if any so being that the police were um there um, they did break it up. I do not believe they went, well, I don't say I believe. I know they were not arrested um, because one of the women, the mom that actually started the pushing, she went to a local bar club and started up another fight. <laughs> Sad to say. But, um, yeah, they, my, I had my aunt, she actually warned the security guy at the club door, like, hey, you might not want to let her in because she just left the last function starting stuff. And I think she's still on that type of time. They did not take heed to the warning. And guess what? She got put on the floor again. <laughs> wow. That's, that's, not, that's crazy. That's <laughs> so, Leo, oh, man, awesome uh, conversation. Great time. I'm I'm glad that we was able to get it uh, to get it in, and I appreciate the sit down and everything. I I will continue to be you know I I will continue to watch your page and and you know be a you know be a contributor as far as you know comments and stuff like that, man. But uh, but yeah, more power to you and more success for your for your brand. Thank you i appreciate that and if we have any listeners who would like to find me and support as well y'all can find me on all social media platforms body b-a-w-d-y x lil l-e-i-l and i'm on tiktok ig facebook and youtube y'all i got actual footage i did a whole vlog of the fashion show day because that was also my girl's birthday and so, yeah, I would appreciate it if y'all went and checked that out. Check her out, y'all. Bo- Body by Leah. You know, I already told her in the beginning that I beat people's names up. So I'm sorry. But, yeah. Definitely. You got it right, though. Okay, okay. Body by Leah. Make sure you guys check it out. How did your husband feel about the situation that happened at the fashion show? Um, He honestly wasn't surprised. Um, he was pretty much like me, just shaking his head. Like, like I literally texted him right when I seen the fight happening, and I was just like, "Bro, you cannot believe they in here fighting." And he was just like, "Up, oh, time to go," because <laughs> he knew I had our kids with me, and um, he's already like that whenever I'm in Richmond County, anyway. Like, he doesn't like me going out to any of their bars. None of that, because he knows that this type of area is where they like to fight, they like to shoot, and he just never wants me in that type of environment because we have so much to lose. So when I sent that text, I put my phone away. I made sure I had my girl. I had my models. We got our stuff out the dressing room, and we were out. Like, the police weren't even allowing us to have conversations outside of our cars. Like, I couldn't get my stuff back in my car fast enough. And I'm like, sir, I'm trying. <laughs> and they were just like, y'all got to go. But, yeah, he was just that we were safe. And, like I said, it was our daughter's birthday. And so she definitely will not forget this one. <laughs> but would that determine you? Uh, would that would that make you feel some kind of way to do another fashion show in the future? No, I would definitely be open to it. I would just be selective about location. Because I understand that that doesn't happen everywhere. Um, and, yeah, I wouldn't I'm, – I'm looking forward to, like, New York Fashion Week. I want to be in Atlanta. I want to be, like, in other states and places that they – this is, like, their culture. This is their thing. This is what they do often every year. Like, I get what they're trying to do in this area. 
but I just understand that. <clears throat> Excuse me. My brand is just going to be bigger than my hometown. I already know it is. So it's just like, I'm just going to focus on working with people who are just professional all around. Because there was other factors during the time that the fashion show was going on that probably contributed to, you know, the frustration. Simply because the event was supposed to start at 7, it didn't start on time. People were kind of waiting around, not really knowing what was going on. They weren't being properly guided or communicated the way they should have been. And so some people could have been irritable because of that, you know. So there were just so many other factors that played into it where I would just feel like I would do it again, just somewhere else. There's so many bad dogs on my left and my right. Take a shot for all of your brides.